Good day, everyone. I was born and raised in Detroit. Growing up there, I saw people like me running things. This is a courtroom, not a circus, so we're going to calm down. I'm sorry. What I found there was a passion that I didn't know existed. This is the bottom line. I'm excited to free fall into the limitless possibilities with we the people. So many are fearful of the law. They think it's something that works against them. I think you need to begin to accept responsibility for your mistakes. We are the people. Janelle Williamson claims she was bamboozled when she bought a vintage designer purse that turned out to be fake. Krista Sneed maintains that she doesn't sell knockoffs. All rise. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Lauren Lake presiding. Please be seated. Good morning, Your Honor. Good morning. Good day, everyone. Good day. This is the case of Williamson versus Sneed. Ms. Williamson, you are suing Ms. Sneed for $478.50. You say it's the cost of a bag that you purchased at her boutique that turned out to be fake. Yes, Your Honor. All right, tell the court what happened. So I went to Ms. Sneed's store and I liked a bag. So I looked at this bag, examined the bag, looked at the label, saw the price, and I was like, oh, this is nice. I feel like it's a steal for the price and the label. So I went on to get the bag, and I was about to leave. And she was like, oh, remember, it's no refunds, no exchanges, no whatever. So I was like, oh, yeah. But then I went on to my house, excited about, you know, again, having a steal. And my cousins were like, yeah, darling, this is fake. And then I went on to even go to the store and get it examined. And they said, I'm so sorry, ma'am, it's a fake bag. And then I just looked stupid. So, if it was a steal, mm -hmm. why did you think it was real? Because it's a vintage store. So vintage stores generally, the ones I've been to anyway, sell real bags. But apart from that, <laughs> it was definitely expensive for a vintage store. But because of the label and the price, I thought, oh, this is a steal. This is a great value. Yes, I want to keep it. You want to mm -hmm. you you get the bag? Yes. Okay, and you bought it? Yes. All right, so Ms. Sneed, how do you respond to Ms. Williamson's claim? She says she came into your store, she saw a bag, and she thought she was getting a real bag. What do you say to this? First of all, she never asked me if it was real, so I never stated that it was, but I also never thought I would need to because I don't accept things into the store that are fakes. So it just wouldn't have dawned on oh, me. Oh, so you don't sell any fakes in your store? No, we don't sell any fakes because it, if it has a designer, excuse me, if it has a designer label, then it is a designer item. We certainly do have other vintage items, say from the 1920s and such, that don't have any label. Well, of and, course. Right, yeah. But if it says it's a designer, it's a designer. But you don't sell replicas or copies of vintage bags. We do not Tell sell fakes. Don't. And so, Ms. Williamson, I'd like to know from you then, how did you come to believe it was the designer bag you thought it was? So it has the label and it has the monogram logo on the corner. You know how it has the tiny little label in the corners of these designer bags? So, so it, it had the label? Well. Yes. So you went into the actual store yes. of the designer yes. and they basically said, this is not one of ours. Yes. Or this, did they make a purse that was just like that? Yes. Or was there... So there is a purse that's similar, at yeah. the similar or exactly like it. That's a difference. I thought it looked exactly like it, but when I went into the store and she pulled it up on the computer, she was like, oh, yeah, no, this is... You could see the differences yeah. between the real bag and what you had. Mm -hmm. How did the actual label look? The label was very similar. The difference was the bag that I got from her was black, and the label that they have was like a gray black, so it wasn't like a black black, but her label Did you bring black. the bag with you? I did, Your Let Honor. me see it, please. Thank you, Sean. You're welcome. And the label's in the inside? Yes. It's a smaller bag, so the label is small. Mm -hmm. So when you go back to Miss Sneed and go back to the shop, what do you say? I was like, oh, hi. I would like to return this bag. I realize it's fake. You know, I'm sorry that I found out so late. I should have known when I was in the store. But I realized the bag was fake, and I would like my money back. Okay, so why did you apologize for saying, I'm sorry, I should have known this was a fake in the store? Oh, because I, I mean, I feel like I would, should have known, just being me, I should have known that it was a fake bag. And I honestly don't even think she knows it's a fake bag, which is ridiculous. The only problem with this is, Miss Sneed, is you're saying to me you believe the, the bag was real. 
Can I tell you why I believe it's real? Yes. Um, I believe that vintage, it also means old and of a time, and that bag is not a current of their models that they make now. It's one of their vintage bags. And I don't know who you talk to in the store, but I don't know that the person working in the store was necessarily as knowledgeable as the vendor that I got it from, that I use all of the time, to know that that bag was real or not. So she did say that I, when she was leaving, I said no refunds, no exchanges, and no returns. That is not how it happened. I have here no refunds, no exchanges, no returns. It's on the register. Let um, me see your policy. Sean, will you hand that to me, please? Thank you. Here we go. The Remix Boudoir. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I should have known. It's a remix. It's I should have known. From the old That's and exactly new. what I was thinking. Exactly. And if you think about know. what a remix is. It's exactly. the old to the new. It's hip to the now. Well, no. it might be hip to the <laughs> now. It might be fake. We don't know. <laughs> I know. Coming up. You just said, I'm selling real bags. Yeah, I believe that's I my, And that's what you say your store does. You said your store doesn't carry knockoffs. No. Which you shouldn't. But, 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 but you say it doesn't. It doesn't. And later, the plane was about to land. He rushes towards the front, tries to remove his luggage from my overhead compartment, and it fell and hit me on the head. And knocked you out? Yes, ma'am. Oh, my goodness. We're back with a dispute between Janelle Williamson and Krista Sneed over the authenticity of a designer purse. See, you just set yourself up here in this courtroom. It's okay. So if it's fake, then you just basically owe her her money back. Yep. With the exception of the policy that she bought a bag and the I sold a bag. To, to no, 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 no. Bag. Because you just said, I'm selling real bags. Yeah, I believe that's I am. my And that's what you say your store does. You yes. said your store doesn't carry knockoffs. No. Which you shouldn't. But, but, shouldn't. But, but, but you say it doesn't. It doesn't. So what if, from this bag, it's obvious to see that the name on the bag is different from what the company says, and it's a fake bag. Then what is your policy? Okay, if I believed it was obvious to see or that she even went to a store or that the store was a store that was versed in vintage bags of that same brand, then I would discuss it with her, but I still have my policy of no refunds, no exchanges, Once and returns. Once she called and said the bag was fake, because this is... She came to the store. No, no, no. This is, you know, this is the part about yeah. stores and customer service. And mm -hmm. lucky for you, I've worked retail okay, a long time mm -hmm. and also used to own and operate a store. Mm -hmm. And what good customer service usually dictates is that the customer's always right. Unless the customer is being utterly unreasonable. Okay? So if a customer buys a vintage bag that now you've testified in open court, you believe is real, and she believed was real, but was a great deal because it was vintage, yeah. you both leave out of that transaction thinking she has a real bag. Yes. If something happens and she tells you she goes into the retail store and they tell her that is not a real bag, what responsibility do you have then to find out whether the bag you sold her is real or fake? I did my due diligence yes. when I got the bag from my vendor. We always take any product that does have a label that we get into the store and we do our comparisons with our vendor and with the people that we use from the designers. Uh, my, 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 I'm sorry, this is just backstory, but my mother has worked in the industry of fashion for a long time since I was a child. And I have many people that I contact if I have a question about the validity of a product. Don't tell me about your vendor told you. Don't, because they're making too good of fakes right now. Right. How yep. do you know I went this bag my, is real? I went through the same step that I go with all Did of my other Did you ever items. go back to the place where she says they told her this is not our bag to the designer? Have you gone? She didn't to, tell me where she went. Okay. Have you gone <laughs> to the designer on your own? No, I haven't gone to the okay, designer. Okay, that's what I want to hear. I've heard enough. Okay, so this is the problem. The problem is this. You have a store that warrants that it sells vintage real bags. So a person going in and purchasing, no matter whether it's a great deal or it's not a great deal, you're thinking, I'm getting a vintage real bag. Now, the label on this bag is such that it is so substantially similar to the label of the true designer mm -hmm. bag that bag. maybe the person could not recognize it that's what fake bags are all about or it's real but bag. the point is miss need miss need miss need i love when people want to go tit for tat with me in courtroom but you ain't going tit for tat with your quality control and making sure that the bags you're getting in are what you are warranting that you're selling and that's the problem here yep. and all i needed to hear from you 
truly in this testimony is that you did some very real due diligence to be able to uphold your company's standards, that it's a real bag to say, and I went to this company. I went there myself because I wanted to find out whether or not the bag is real or fake. That's when I can understand that maybe your supplier got something past you. I believe she is lying and did not go to the company. That is my point. Right. <laughs> but did you go to the company I did yourself not because and I figure it, was right. it out? No. no. That's the whole point. Okay. You are not operating your business point? well. Now, the problem is this. I'm in here, and I have to figure out whether she gets all her money back or whether she doesn't because you just haven't done your job. So at the end of the day, I'm going to award the plaintiff the $470 Please don't do all that. That's too much. Now you're going to get on my nerves and change the money Sorry, I'm about to give Honor. you. This should challenge you to do due diligence on every single product you bring in the store. The reason why I know this is because my nephew actually works for a sneaker company that specializes in the resale of sneakers. They have an entire division. They're called authenticators. That's what they do. They authenticate a certain product. You need to invest in that so that you are not warranting to customers you have real things and you don't. Judgment for the plaintiff for $478.50. Court is adjourned. All rise. Judge Lake has ruled in favor of the plaintiff. The defendant owes $478.50. You told me you had a date that night and that you were going to use that bag that night. And what I think is you used it and wanted to return it so you could get your money back. Are you I couldn't tell her Joy, that because she wouldn't like let me smoke. I'm the type of person that would do that. Well, I don't look at looks. You do. Daddy, you're the bag Daddy, aficionado. You don't look at looks because that's why you're selling a fake bag. Right, oh, darling. Obviously, darling. Which you would know because you, you may now exit the courtroom. Uh-huh. Coming up. What happens? He rushes towards the front, tries to remove his luggage from my overhead compartment, and it fell and hit me on the head. And knocked you out? Yes, ma'am. Network featuring dynamic judges and live legal programming. Well, we're not oh, at your school. We're in my courtroom. Unique court shows. Where is any information about the company? Live legal news. That's what you should have done. And a commitment to justice. Either you tried or you did it. The next generation of court programming in one dynamic network. Justice Central. You're watching Justice Central. Stay tuned. You're watching Justice Central. You're watching We the People with Judge Lauren Lake. Ryan Brown claims an impatient passenger on his flight is responsible for his concussion. Gregory Landis says the accident happened because he was rushing to get to a funeral. Good day, everyone. Good day. This is the case of Brown versus Landis. Mr. Brown, you are suing Mr. Landis for $3,700. It says it's for the cost of medical bills you suffered from a concussion when you were hit in the head by Mr. Landis' suitcase on a flight. Yes, Explain to the right. court what happened. Yes, ma'am. I was on a flight to a very important conference for my company, and uh, we were just about to land, and the defendant... He just rushes his way up the aisle, and, you know, nobody was even supposed to be up, you know, the... So, let me be clear, was the plane still in the air, or you had landed and it was sitting, but you weren't at the gate? We were already landed. The plane was taxiing to the, you know, on the runway. And all of a sudden, you hear someone barreling up, or the cabinet above your head is open? What happens? He rushes towards the front tries to remove his luggage from my overhead compartment, and it fell and hit me on the head. Oh, when he pulled his luggage out, it fell on you? Yes, ma'am. And knocked you out? Yes, ma'am. Oh, my goodness. So, Mr. Landis, how do you respond to this? Your Honor, it was, it was an accident, but I was in a hurry because the flight had been delayed. I was on my way to my cousin's funeral. I needed to make that. I had placed it pretty securely. I had made sure there was room for it, and I, there was room for it to lay on its side, but it was... There was it was a bumpy flight, so it like had shifted, on, you know, sort of on its side. So it was on its side this way, and then when you opened it, it hit him. It, it I saw it kind of like start to fall, so I kind of hesitated in grabbing it, and the wheel got 
you know, the wheel on the bag got caught. Coming up. I saw Mr. Landis come up the aisle, and I asked him multiple times to please sit down. He did not listen. I saw his bag fall. That is when I got up and ran to Mr. Brown's side. We're back with the case of Ryan Brown, who blames fellow airline passenger Gregory Landis for his head injury. Bottom line, you dropped it, and yes. you're admitting you did. Yes, but and it, it was... fell on his head. Yes, but it was in no way on purpose or any way that I could predict how that was going to happen. I'd like to hear from your witness, Mr. Brown. Will you stand, ma'am? State your name for the court. My name is Maria Costin, and I was the flight attendant on the flight between Mr. Landis and Mr. Brown. Thank you for being here, Ms. Costin. I'd like to understand from your perspective what happened when the flight landed. His bag was technically a carry-on, but it was a little stuffed. But when I saw him put his bag up, it technically did fit. Mm -hmm. So when we landed and touched down, we were still taxiing to the gate. The seatbelt sign was still on, and I saw Mr. Landis come up the aisle, and I asked him multiple times to please sit down. We need to stay in our seats. He did not listen. So finally, once he had opened the overhead bin space and I saw his bag fall, that is when I got up and ran to Mr. Brown's side. So you saw him open it and his bag just fall out. He was not trying to get it out and dropped it. He kind of like grabbed it, reassessed, and then dropped it. Okay. So where were you? Were you in the back of the plane seated where you could see all of this? Actually, I was in the front of the plane facing the passengers because everyone was seated at the time. Everyone... Including the attendants? Correct. And this was not a time that he should even be walking? Correct. Everybody was supposed to be seated, and the seatbelt sign was still on. All right. Your Honor, let it be known, please, that the plane was stopped for a good minute before I decided to get up. I thought the gate, I thought it was at the gate already, but... Right. Judge Lake's verdict when We the People returns. Mr. Landis, there is never a time that a passenger can just unilaterally decide I'm going to remove myself from my seat and run up the aisle and this is probably the exact reasons why airlines want to be at a complete stop at a gate before the overhead bins are open for the cases just like this that someone could be injured now I am not hearing right now any way that the flight attendants and the airlines were negligent but that is going to be something for the court to decide Mr. Brown when you move on with that portion of your litigation, yes, but in this court here today, Mr. Landis, I have found you to be liable for the $3,700 in damages that Mr. Brown suffered because you did not follow the rules that are put in place to keep you and other passengers safe. With that said, judgment for the plaintiff for $3,700. Court is adjourned. Thank you, Your Honor. All rise. Judge Lake has ruled in favor of the plaintiff. The defendant owes $3,700. It's not even my fault. I am prepared to sue you, I mean, go you know, for the, soothe the airline. First. I know you lost your cousin, but there's still, you know, rules don't, that you have to follow. Don't even talk about my cousin right now. Yeah, I apologize about your cousin, dude. Language, sir. You may now exit the room.